Keeping up with all the requirements of HIPAA can feel like being lost in a big city that you've never been in before without a map. You want to make sure your practice is in compliance with HIPAA, and you know there can be hefty financial penalties if you don't stay in compliance with HIPAA, but can just seem overwhelming to keep up with all the requirements. Today I'm going to cover six basic requirements of HIPAA that your practice, and especially small practices, may not be aware of. While this is certainly not an exhaustive list of all of the requirements of HIPAA and hopefully we'll give you at least a starting point how to stay in compliance. And hopefully by having a starting point this will help you to kind of get a road map of how to navigate through that map of HIPAA, get in compliance with all the requirements and make sure you avoid any nasty penalties. So let's jump in. Hey Tooth Nation, I'm the Orth Attorney, Trey Lawrence. I've been in the practice of law for over 20 years and I'm general counsel for the American Association of Orthodontists. The Orth Attorney brings you important legal information for your dental or orthodontic practice that's essential, relevant, and hopefully at least mildly entertaining. And the standard blah, blah, blah legal disclaimers I have to give you, the information presented on the Orth Attorney is not intended to convey legal advice. It is not intended to constitute an advertisement of legal services. And the Orth Attorney strongly recommends that you consult with an attorney that's licensed in your state or jurisdiction before taking any action that could result in legal liability for you or your practice. And that is all especially true for a complicated regulatory system like HIPAA that we're going to talk about today. So figuring out HIPAA can feel like you're in a big city that you've never been in trying to find your way around without a roadmap. You hear about different things that you think are required under HIPAA, but looking at them all can be like looking at this big sea of tall buildings that you've never been around before trying to find your way through them. The good thing is most of HIPAA's requirements are not actually that burdensome. It's just that you need to know about them and then of course make sure that you're in compliance with them. It's just like getting around that big city. You just do it one step at a time and you have to know where you're going. And why does it matter? Because as you probably know, there can be hefty financial penalties involved with violations of HIPAA. You want to stay away from those. So I cannot give you the encyclopedia, the entire set of requirements under HIPAA, but I am going to give you in this video today six basic requirements and some that you may not be aware of as a starting point. So let's jump in and talk about those now. Number one, your practice must have HIPAA policies and procedures and you must make patients aware of them. So under HIPAA, your practice is required to have policies and procedures concerning HIPAA privacy, security, and breach notification rules. In a nutshell, these are the most basic requirements of HIPAA. We will keep your personal health information confidential. We will only release that confidential information to authorized persons, and we will follow certain procedures if those policies are breached. So you have to do two things to publicize these policies and procedures in your practice. First of all, you need to post them in a publicly visible place in your practice. And second of all, you need to provide patients with a copy of your policies and procedures. And finally, all of your staff must have reviewed and agreed to follow those policies and procedures. And you need to keep documentation of that, which most often is a signed statement from each employee saying that they have reviewed and agreed to abide by your HIPAA policies and procedures. And that, of course, is most often done at the time that the employee first starts with your practice. Requirement number two, your practice must train your employees on your HIPAA policies and procedures. HIPAA's rules say that you have to train your employees on HIPAA policies and procedures at least two times. First of all, HIPAA's when rules start say that you have to train your employees within a reasonable time after they start employing your practice. First of all, when they start employing your practice, any time there is a material change within a reasonable time after they start employing that employee's responsibility. So the first one is easy. Every and employee is trained in HIPAA and need to have documentation that they've been trained in HIPAA. On the second one, anytime your practice's HIPAA policies and procedures change or HIPAA's requirements themselves change, any employee whose job responsibilities are affected by those changes needs to be trained in the changes and, of course, documented that they have been trained. Now, as a best practice, in addition to all of that, many healthcare attorneys 
Many HIPAA compliance firms will say that the best practice is to train all of your employees to give them a refresher every year in HIPAA. That's one of those I would strongly recommend that you consult with a health law attorney or a HIPAA compliance firm and find out what they think your practice needs to do. And finally, like you're going to hear with a lot of these, keep documentation about all of that training for all of those employees. The third requirement is you need to designate a HIPAA compliance officer and an individual that's responsible for complaints about your HIPAA policies and procedures. So this is one of those that first of all, probably sounds worse than it really is, but second of all, I would bet many practices This is one of those, first of all, that probably sounds worse than so HIPAA really requires is, that you have a designated compliance officer. Now that sounds a lot more official than it really is. Basically what that means is you need to have one person who's designated as part of their job responsibility is to be aware of HIPAA's requirements and make sure your practice is in compliance with them. It can be anybody on your staff, the doctor, any other staff person, anybody who's familiar with HIPAA's requirements can make sure that you're following them. And of course, you need to keep documentation of who it is. Now, on both of these, you just want to make sure if somebody that's charged with enforcing HIPAA ever came into your practice and asked you, who is your compliance officer, who is your complaints person, that you can point to those individuals those individuals know that they fill those roles. Number four, have a designated process for HIPAA breaches. HIPAA requires that you have a written policy that sets out what is the procedure if there is a breach of HIPAA. Of HIPAA, HIPAA requires that you have that a could written be a data policy security that sets out what is the procedure could be a if there is a breach of HIPAA information of was given to somebody who was that not could be a data security type procedure. breach. In either of those that cases, could be a you need breach. to have a written policy that sets out what the procedure is and when one of those things happens. This is one of those requirements you should probably consider spending a few dollars to talk to an expert, a healthcare law attorney or a HIPAA compliance firm. Let them set out that policy and procedure for you rather than trying to come up with it yourself. And of course, this is one of those things that we talked about a minute ago that your employees need to be trained in so they know what it is as well. Number five. HIPAA has six required annual audits. Now, this is one of those that I bet you weren't aware of. Number five, Yikes. HIPAA, HIPAA has requires six that you required six annual audits. audits every year. Those six audits are. Now, this is one of those that I bet you weren't aware of. A security risk audit. Yikes. A privacy standards audit. A high tech subtitle D HIPAA privacy audit. A security standards HIPAA audit. HIPAA requires that you perform an asset six and device audits, audits every and year. A physical those six audits are. And going into the scope of exactly what each of those audits requires would be far beyond the scope of this video and would probably make this one of the most boring videos in YouTube history. But again, much of this process, these audits are not really that burdensome. It's just knowing what they are, knowing what they require, and then doing it. So unfortunately, yep, this is probably another one you need to spend a few bucks and talk to a healthcare law attorney or a HIPAA compliance firm and make sure you know what all the audits are Get a system in place so that you can do them every year. And of course, like everything else related to this, document what your process is for the audits, document that you do the audits every year. And number six, business associate agreements. Your practice is going to work with vendors who, as part of the jobs that your they do for your is practice, going to work are going to have to come into contact with the patients that they do for your practice. So, therefore, HIPAA requires that you have business associate agreements in place with all of those vendors so that they have to follow the same protections so, that you do. So, therefore, HIPAA requires that you have business HIPAA. associate Good agreements news. in place with all of those HHS, vendors. The Department of Health so and Human Services, they actually have to follow the same protections that you do agreement for that patient on their website that you can use as your business associate agreement for your vendors. Just fill in the blanks and you can use the template. I will put a link in the description box below to that template business associate agreement from HHS. Now, one final question I get a lot, there are going to be some vendors that inadvertently come into contact or may you know, run across patient information, but they're not really there to do a job that actually involves that patient information. So the question in particular I get all the time is janitorial services, custodial services, those kind of people that may brush up against patient information, but it's not really their job to deal with it. HHS specifically says that for those kind of vendors, you don't have to have a business associate agreement. It's only the vendors who part of what they're doing for you requires them to access the patient information. Those are the vendors that you need a business associate agreement with.
So the basic requirements of HIPAA, it doesn't have to be like a big city that you've never been in before without a map to help you find your way around. Be aware of what HIPAA's basic requirements are and you can make sure that you're in compliance with So the basic of that process, of HIPAA, make sure it doesn't you have to be like a big city that you've never been in before from somebody who's an expert in the field around. that can help you navigate all that. So I'm the one attorney, Trey Lawrence. If you found the information in this video, be aware please of what HIPAA's hit basic like requirements below. are and hit you can make sure that you're in compliance. Ring the notification bell so you get noticed every time videos come out on legal topics just like this, at least weekly. And to that help with that process, make sure you this information helpful. Attorney, click on the links below in the description box. Somebody who's an expert in the field can Instagram, help TikTok, you navigate. Information on legal topics just like this comes out on an almost daily basis. So until next time, Tune Nation. So I'm the one attorney, Trey Lawrence. Stay out of legal trouble. Find the information on this video. Please hit that like button down below. Catch you next time. Hit the subscribe button.